case sensitive count report, Power Query or a spilled Lambda formula? The goal is to go from this product table and get a unique list, but notice Carlota and Carlota, those need to be different because the case is different. And then we need to count. Now here's the thing, to accomplish this report, Power Query is by far the easiest method. The dynamic spilled array formula is going to be much more complex. However, anytime you use formulas, the one advantage is that everything updates instantly when source data changes. Now let's go over to the sheet 1792. Here's our table. We're going to select a single cell, and we'll do Power Query first. Power Query is this area in the Data Ribbon tab. We need to bring this table into the Power Query Editor. So I click From, Table, or Range. I'm going to rename this query something like Case Sensitive Count Report. And here's how amazingly easy it is. If we want to get a unique list from this column and then make some aggregate calculation, in Power Query, we use the Group By feature. Right click, Group By. This column is the column that Power Query will create a unique list from. The default is count. Count rows is exactly what we want. So I click OK. And that's it. Close and load. Close and load to table existing. I'm going to put it in cell E3. Click OK. And of course, the reason that Power Query can do this is because unlike Excel, or the data model in Power Pivot or Power BI. Everything in Power Query and the M code function language behind the scenes is case sensitive. All right, now let's build the formula solution. And be warned, this is going to be an advanced array formula. Now, there are only a couple functions in Excel that are case sensitive. Find is one, and exact is another one. Exact will check whether two things are equivalent based on case. And I want to copy this formula down and get a running count. So here I need one, here I need one, here I need two. So for the first text, I'm just going to use as a relative cell reference B3. So I'm going to type B3, comma, and for text two, we need an expandable range. Here I need just B3, here I need B3 to B4, and so on. So B dollar sign 3 colon B3. That range will expand as I copy it down. Now, as it stands right now, it'll give us trues and falses. And as we copy it down, it'll give us a bigger and bigger array of trues and falses. So I want to convert those trues and falses to ones and zeros. So I'll use double negative. And then I want to add, because I'm trying to get a running count, and that formula will work all the way down. One copy it down. If we go to cell number 3 and hit F2, the range is definitely expanding. The criteria or condition is looking at this row. If we highlight everything in exact, it should give us three answers, actually without the double negative, F9. And then the double negative, F9 again, that'll give us ones and zeros. Now the sum can add to get the running count. Now I absolutely do not want to hit Enter. I did Control-Z two times in a row in edit mode for this formula. So I'm very carefully going to click Escape. Now notice that we had to manually copy this formula down. And our goal is to get a formula that spills all the results. Now anytime you have an aggregate calculation that you're making row by row, Aggregate calculations themselves cannot spill, because the definition of aggregate is to take many and deliver one. However, in the new Excel, we have by rows, and it'll work with lambda, which we'll use in the function argument. The combination of by row and lambda will allow us to spill aggregate results. Now, the array, well, we need to calculate the formula row by row across that array comma, and then this is a function value. We're allowed to create a function, and this is really new in Excel. We use the lambda function. And the function we want to create is, in essence, this 
running count formula. Now, lambda works with by rows. And lambda will take whatever function or formula we create and go row by row and make an aggregate calculation for each row. But lambda needs to communicate with by row. So we create a variable, or they call it a parameter, r. All that means is whatever name we give it, that's going to allow us to go row by row and make a calculation. Now I'm going to close this. Now we type a comma, and this is where we want our calculation. Sum, double negative, exact. And remember, our formula had a relative cell reference. So all we have to do is put R here, because R represents the first row, and then the second row, and the third row, and so on. Comma. But here's where this formula gets tricky, because we need an expandable range. As lambda takes our formula row by row, I need this argument to expand. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to use index on the entire column. And because the first reference in an expandable range always has to be the first item or the first row, I'm going to hard code row reference 1. That way, as the formula copies down using by row and lambda, index will always look up the first cell reference. Now, wait a second. Does an index look up a value in a cell? Well, if you put index in the context of a range, which we do by putting a colon, index returns a cell reference rather than the content of that cell. And here, we put R. So now in the second argument of exact text 2, we have our expandable range. That R comes after a colon. So now that will always get the latest cell reference for whichever row. And since it's connected to index, that always looks up the first cell reference, bam. That's our expandable range. Now close on exact, close on sum, close on lambda, and then by row. Now when I hit Enter, I get exactly the same result as this manually copied exact. But now we spill the results with by row, lambda, and index. Now this is going to be one formula element part that will be in the final report formula. And I want to use the let function so we can define some variables and then reuse them. Alt Enter. The name for this product column, I'm going to call it P for short, comma. The formula element that goes with P, that column there, comma, Alt, Enter. And I'm going to name this, this is this column right here with the marker for the first time a unique item occurs. I'm going to call it F. You can call it something else if you'd like, but comma. So there's the name of the variable. There's the variable. Now in by row, let's replace array with p. And we can't do that for index. That needs to be there as a separate column, or else we get a value error. And I'm not sure why, but we'll leave it. Come to the end, comma, Alt, Enter. And we're going to need another column similar to this one, but it's going to need the total count for each row. And I'm going to call this one c for count, comma. And it's going to be almost exactly like this. So I'm going to copy in edit mode, Control V. And instead of an expandable range in text 2, we're just going to put the full P column. That way, this little bit right here will deliver the count in each row. Now let's test that at the end, comma, and the calculation. Well, I'm going to see what C delivers. So I'll just type C, close parentheses, and Enter. And we get exactly what we want. This, in essence, this column here will be the filter at the end to get a unique list. From this column here, we need to join it to the product column. So at the end, I'm going to highlight Alt, Enter. And this is where we're going to create our final mash together report. We'll use a new function called horizontal stack. The first array, well, that's going to be the P column comma. The second array will be the count column, close. And this is the calculation, right? So close. And when I hit Enter, now I have one, two columns. Now we want to filter this based on this column here. So before HStack, let's filter using the filter function. 
There's the array. And then very carefully, the second argument, comma, in filters called include. And the name of the column is f when it's equal to 1. Now we can close on filter. And now when we hit Enter, there's a unique list of case-sensitive items and the counts. One last bit, F2. We can add some headers at the top. So we use V for vertical, vertical stack. And I'm going to hard code the field names in. So open curly bracket, double quotes, product. So it's in the curly brackets. That's the first element in the horizontal array. Comma means go over a column, double quote, count, and double quotes, and then close off the horizontal array. That's array 1, comma. There's array 2, the filter. We come to the end and close parentheses, and bam, there's our report. Now watch this. I'm just going to move the top cell, because remember, the formula only lives in the top cell. So I'm simply going to move it. Now let's test our two reports by adding a new record, tab. HH is the name of this. It doesn't matter what that number is. And sure enough, it did show up. It didn't show up here. Tab, HH, tab, doesn't matter what this is. And now this report is totally expanding as we change the data. If I come over, it's super easy to update Power Query. Right click, refresh. And there we go, a unique list of case sensitive items that counts done with Power Query and with a dynamic spilled array formula using lambda, by rows, and a bunch of other cool functions. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.